you know, even here in Vegas, there was a time when all of this would have made a stir on TV. In fact, I made quite a stir on radio in the 1990s as part of the first openly gay couple with my late partner, Andrew Howard. He passed away in 2001. Miss him every day. We hosted a drive-time radio show on KFI AM 640. It took radio until the 90s to do that, but not TV. In 1939 on BBC One, Douglas Bring became the first female impersonator on UK television. Queer Plus characters began appearing in the U.S. in the 50s on Ernie Kovacs and Steve Allen shows, but, you know, they were mostly stereotypes or caricatures other than really real people. Finally, in the 1970s, right in front of my eyes, I watched as Norman Lear presented the LGBTQ character uh, on many of his shows. And then, of course, Billy Crystal as the out and not that proud Jody Dallas on the hit 70s sitcom Soap. Changed my life. Uh, to really get the party going, he really did when it came to getting gay characters on TV. In the 80s, shows like Roseanne and the Kids in the Hall helped open closet doors in Hollywood wider. And by the 1990s, it seemed like every show, from My Little Dancing Babies on Ally McBeal to Sybil to Friends, peppered their plots with LGBTQ characters. And then, of course, Will and Grace. Queerest folk, glee, modern family. That doesn't mean that in 2021 that the LGBTQ, Latinx, Black, Asian, and other cultures are all fairly represented on TV equally with depth and with meaning and all of that, but we are making headway. For instance, when the Dorians began over a decade ago, there weren't many shows to pick from for the first LGBTQ show category, which brings us to this year's Dorian for the best LGBTQ show. One of the most groundbreaking series for and from the community was The L Word. It came to TV during the LGBTQ coming of age, and it hit all the right notes to make it a huge international success. The top build star of the very first lesbian drama series on TV was a movie icon. At age 18, as a competitive dancer in flash dance, she made us all want to get in a chair and douse ourselves with water and rip a t-shirt. What a feeling! Uh, oh, come on, you haven't? She now stars in and co-produces Showtime's sequel, The L Word, Generation Q. And behind the camera, she's a huge champion of women's rights and LGBTQ rights via the Human Rights Campaign, the Matthew Shepard Foundation, on and on and on. Please welcome the ever-alluring, the ever-fabulous Jennifer Beals here to help show how far we've come with LGBTQ programming. Come on, Jennifer, what a feeling! Thanks, Carol. Much like women's roles on TV have grown over the years, roles and shows about, with, and from LGBTQ people are more important than ever for so many obvious reasons. That's why I am thrilled to be presenting the Dorian for Best LGBTQ TV Show. It just so happens these five nominees aren't just great LGBTQ TV. They're great television, period. They are I May Destroy You, from series creator and writer and extraordinary star, Michaela Cole. Set in London, this laugh and cry comical drama is filled with dynamic characters hoping to learn and rise from experience. It's a sin from Queer as Folk mastermind Russell T. Davies about a group of friends in the 1980s facing the AIDS crisis, holding on to each other for dear life. Love, Victor, the rare and poignant and sweet and funny coming-of-age drama about a gay high school kid. Pose, the drama that brought 80s New York ball life to life and gave trans, gay, bi, and non-binary characters revolutionary depth. And Venino, a vivid docudrama about the life of La Venino an enigmatic trans singer and TV personality who became one of Spain's greatest LGBTQ icons. And the Dorian for best LGBTQ show goes to It's a Sin, accepting is creator Russell T. Davies. Congratulations. <laughs> 